not a drift, but a major shift towards the types of questions which are asked now. So we have the image-based questions which are asked now both in NEET PG and FMG. And this class would just help you in preparing for your examinations and would touch the types of questions either which have been asked previously or which would be expected ahead as well. Now, so we will be taking up surgery and its allied branches. So you can have a look at the board and you can see that this is a figure over here and a question based from anesthesiology. And the question reads as, the anesthesiologist is concerned with the safety of an epileptic patient. The arrow points towards a safety part in the head and neck. It points towards cartilage muscle and palate, soft and hard palate. So this is a CT scan of the head and neck region wherein you are asked to identify simply the structure. Basically, the, there's a bit of a clue as well. And the clue over here is the safety part in the head and neck. There are many safety things in the body. But over here, as you can see, there's an arrow and the arrow. And this is the mandible. From the mandible, we have the superior genial tubercle. And from the superior genial tubercle, we have a muscle, very important muscle. And that is the genioglossus. The genioglossus is one important muscle which arises from the superior genial tubercle is a fan-shaped muscle forms the bulk of the tongue and it is responsible for preventing the tongue for, from falling backwards especially in emergencies like epileptics once an epileptic patient loses his or her consciousness what happens the tongue falls backwards and obstructs the airways and this can be the cause of death in case of epileptic patients during an epileptic attack or status epileptics. So this is important. So here the question is not given directly to answer a specific structure. It has been written indirectly cartilage or muscle. So this is basically option B muscle and this muscle is the genioglossus. That's important. Now over here is the second question. So this question over here reads, the above figure shows severe polyposis. So you can show an endoscopic picture in which there are these polyps, multiple poly polyps which carpet the interior of the gastrointestinal tract. But here the patient was ultimately diagnosed with Gardner syndrome. The APC gene is implicated. Now here the examiner tests your knowledge of pathology and the gene implicated. It is not only important for you to know superficial things about the diseases. You have to know in depth about the genetics, the pathogenesis, the pathogenetic mechanisms, the genes implied, not only the superficial facts about the presentation and the symptomatology of the disease. So now as far as your knowledge from the colonic polyposis syndromes is concerned. You know that there are so many colonic polyposis syndromes and one of the prominent type being FAP, familial adenomatosis polyposis syndrome. And one important subtype of FAP is the Gardner syndrome. And this Gardner syndrome is characteristically pres uh, characterized by the presence of multiple sometimes hundreds and hundreds of polyps which carpet the whole mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract. So that's important. And it is an autosomal dominant disease. And one important fact over here is given that the APC gene is implicated. So APC gene, it, it, the hint has been given. And you have to remember that the long arm of chromosome 5 not a short arm, but long Q arm of chromosome 5 between positions 21 and 22 is the exact location of the APC gene, which is implicated in the Gardner syndrome pathogenesis. So you have to remember the arm, whether it is the short arm, whether it is the long arm, the chromosome number and the gene. So that is what is tested over here. 
not only the diagnosis is already given in Gardner syndrome. So this is how the questions are asked. And you have to remember that there are so many features associated along with Gardner syndrome. You can have soft tissue tumors, you can have tumors of the bone and dental abnormalities, especially the osteomas of the mandible. So the Gardner syndrome is characterized by polyps in the colon and the soft tissue tumors and the osteomas and the other types of bony tumors, osteomas being the commonest of the bony tumors having association with Gardner syndrome and the gene implicated is the APC gene and the location is the long arm, Q arm of chromosome 5. So that is what you need to know about these diseases. Now moving on to the other question, here a patient is presenting to a surgeon with abdominal protrusion most likely finding suggestive are the most likely finding suggests it's su what is the diagnosis and the options given are abdominal wall hernia retroperitoneal hematoma intestinal obstruction and malnutrition of the gut now as far as these image based questions are concerned you can see over here this is the front of the abdomen and this is the posterior aspect, the back. And in here, you can see there's a protrusion and you can see the coils of intestine having protruded. Now, to make a diagnosis from an image-based question is sometimes very simple. You have to use your common sense. And this is a common sense question. So you can see the abdominal wall protruded from the front and the coils of the intestine lying in the front and protruding. And this is simple. This is simply herniation, abnormal protrusion of viscera. So this is not uh, abdominal wall hernia. And you know that these abdominal uh, wall hernias are usually present in case of lean patients, in case of uh, weak patients, malnourished patients who don't have an effective muscle tone, who don't have an effective muscle power, and they just can present with signs of obstruction as well, anorexia, nausea, vomiting. But over here, we will not go into the mechanisms, the pathology and the surgical and the clinical presentation of these patients. The point here is to identify and retroperitoneal hematomas would be just in the retroperitoneal region and intestinal obstruction. You cannot per se, there would be air fluid levels and malnutrition of the gut uh, would be something associated with uh, some features given other and you cannot make malnutrition, malnutrition of the gut from this CT scan. So this is a grossly displaced gut, not a malnutrited gut which is protruding from the anterior aspect and uh, there is a bulge on the anterior aspect of the abdominal wall. So simply abdominal hernia. Now this is from an allied branch of surgery, the head and neck surgery, ENT and here the ENT surgeon has a patient with otalgia, otalgia, earache, and facial weakness. There are lesions seen on the ear, and these can see, if you just can have a focus on these things, these are multiple lesions on the ear pinna, external ear. The most likely diagnosis is. Now, the examiner here has given you three features. One is otalgia. Second is patient weakness and lesions on his ear. Now cauliflower ear would be present as a hematoma and there would have been a history of some trauma, history of any fight which has injured the ear and caused hematoma formation within the ear pinna. So that would be exploded. The sec I will not go to the second option, malignant otites externa there would have been the presence of a pus discharge and it is written pseudomonal that means it has progressed rapidly the patient would have been toxic there would be it would have been pus protruding from the external auditory meatus and tender inflamed pinna that is not the case over here parotid malignancy with secondary is the last option parotid would be present with the swelling in the parotid region 
and there would be some other features of malignancy and the secondary. Over here, these do not look to be the secondary lesions, and the parotid area is clear. Either from the question, or you can also make a bit that it is although this is covered with a beard, but over here there are no features suggest to a parotid malignancy. Now, coming to this question, it has not been the answer has not been given directly. So this is basically a case of Ramsey Hunt syndrome, wherein we have the vesicles within the external auditory meatus or the pinna, and over here you are well aware of the herpes zoster virus. The shingles we sometimes can affect the seventh cranial nerve it can cause inflammation of one of the important ganglions and that is the genuclear ganglion which is associated with the facial nerve and can present with facial nerve weakness and that's the point over here facial weakness so this patient has present with facial weakness and otalgia earache and these are the vesicular lesions the vesicular or sometimes the vesicular bullas which can get later infected as well and they resemble almost the herpetic classical herpetic lesions so this is simply a case of ramsey hunt syndrome and other the uh, name sometimes given to it is the herpes zoster or the herpes zoster oticus or the herpes zoster of the genuclear ganglion so this is the more relevant option over here. The basic point for you to understand is that, to know is that this we can have the herpes zoster infection of the facial nerve, the genuclear ganglion, and what and how it can present. So this is something that, and Ramsey Hunt syndrome is very important. There are many syndromes which you have to remember, Bell's palsy, you have to remember as far as ENT is concerned, and this happens to be the second thing which is asked. Now, this is again one of the radiological image based questions which asked a young patient with weight loss in anorexia has migratory thrombophilic bites. CT scan finding is uh, are shown and most likely finding is. So what is it? The diagnosis, pancreatitis, pancreatic mass, liver abscess, gastric adenocarcinoma. The arrow is shown pointed. Now, you have to remember that there are these malignancies which can present with anorexia, nausea, weight loss, and they are not unimportant signs. Sometimes they happen to be the only signs of an underlying malignancy. So you should, as a clinician, never undermine the fact that a patient presents with uh, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, or sometimes with rapid loss of weight. Now, sometimes a patient can present the joints as well, and that can be a case of gastric adenocarcinoma as well, with secondaries in the liver. Uh, but over here, you have this area. The ability of a student to recognize the pancreatic area on a scan, on a CT scan film, is important. So this is the pancreatic area, and you can see a huge irregular mass which has engulfed the pancreas and the most likely thing which I can make it at this point of time initially by looking at the figure by knowing the area of the pancreas is that this is a pancreatic mass. Now you would tell me why not the first uh, option pancreatitis. Pancreatitis would cause acute or chronic mostly acute which would cause pancreatic inflammation which is not seen here and the roughness and the irregularity shows that and it suggests and it is a clue towards a more established lesion and you could have had a pancreatic cirrhosis associated with pancreatitis sometimes but it may take time to develop not always in initial cases but this is a well-defined irregular mass in the pancreatic area and there is no doubt that this is pancreatic mass most likely adenocarcinoma pancreas. Now, here, just concentrate on this thing. Migratory thrombophilibites, this is a clue. The migratory thrombophilibites is a classic association with pancreatic cancer. Many of the pancreatic cancer patients present with this typical association of migratory thrombophilibites. So you have to remember dermatological manifestations, 
and the underlying malignancies like the classic presentation of acanthosis nigricans with a gastric adenocarcinoma. So that's important. There are these signs of malignancy which are manifest in the form of dermatological features and you should always always and always remember the associations so basically this question tests you on multiple levels first the ability to recognize the pancreatic area number second then to know the symptoms subtle symptoms associated with pancreatic or any other malignancy number three how to localize the area which is shown over here so this is how the image based questions are asked and such type of questions will be asked in the future as well i hope that with this class a brief lecture of mine you will be able to do well in your upcoming examinations i wish you best of luck for your examinations thanks a lot